What's up, YouTube? I'm here to do my prediction video for UFC 256. Let's start at the bottom. The first fight is Chase Cooper versus Pete Barrett. To me, Pete Barrett, it's basically striker versus grappler. I think Pete Barrett's the much better striker, and Hooper is the much better grappler. I think the biggest thing is the conditioning and Hooper's overall ability to take a shot. I think Pete Barrett, you know, he's a decent wrestler, but I think he is very capable of getting taken down. And I think other than Pete knocking Chase out pretty early, which I don't think is going to happen. I think the more this fight, the longer this fight goes on, the more it's going to favor Chase. I think Chase has much better conditioning. And like I said, I think that the more they're just going to continuously tie up, I think Chase will eventually be able to drag this to the ground. And I think he's going to win by sub in like either the late first, late second. Either way, I'm leaning towards Chase. I think other than him getting caught with a big shot, he wins by submission, which can happen. Like I said, Pete's a good striker and Chase. But Chase is getting better all the time. And I feel like as long as his striking is improving... He should be able to win on the ground easy. His jiu-jitsu is way better than Pete's. Next is Tisha Torres versus Sam Hughes. And to me, it's good on Sam Hughes for taking this fight on such short notice. And she's a decent fighter. I just think Tisha Torres is someone who's too good to fight too on this short notice. I, don't, I think Sam Hughes is kind of like a striker wrestler. And I don't think she's going to be able to take Tisha down. I think Tisha's just too good with her striking and movement. Um... I just see Tisha dominating this fight. I don't know if she'll get a finish, but I think she wins all three rounds pretty easily. So I got Torres winning a 30-27 decision. <clears throat> Next is Gavin Tucker versus Billy Quintello. And <clears throat> to me, the biggest thing is I don't think Gavin Tucker is the greatest striker. I think that his overall grappling has improved a lot and his conditioning is really good. But I think Billy's conditioning is just as good and his grappling is just as good. But Billy's just a much better striker. I think that's where the biggest gap in this fight is, is that in terms of their conditioning and grappling overall, it's pretty even. But in terms of the striking, I think Billy's got a massive advantage. And I think that the more it's on the feet and the more Billy forces it on the feet, the more likely he's going to win. And I do think that eventually he's going to just light him up after, you know, Gavin eats a few shots. And I think late second, early third, once Billy's landed a bunch of shots, he's going to go, you know, he'll have done enough damage to where Gavin's just going to, kind of go down, and Billy's going to win by TKO, in my opinion. Next is Hanato Moicano versus Rafael Faiza, and to me, this is basically, you know, it's striker versus grappler, but to me, Moicano has good enough striking to what he could stand with Faiza if he needs to, but I think that if this fight hits the ground, then moicano has got a massive advantage. I know people are really high on Faiza after his last fight, but I mean, it was a kickboxer fighting another kickboxer. And I mean, unless Faiza knocks out Moicano in the first round, I think the longer this fight goes, the more it favors Moicano. I think his conditioning's a lot better. I think that, you know, the way Faiza fights is he throws a shit ton of kicks, and that's always something that drains cardio. And I feel like even if Faiza can win the first round or two, the, if he doesn't knock out Moicano, I think the chance that Moicano eventually gets us to the ground and wins by sub is just insanely high. I think his jiu-jitsu is too good. To where someone like Faiza is just going to get submitted super qu quick. I don't think Faiza has the greatest overall jujitsu. I think he has okay takedown defense. But I don't think he has amazing grappling. I think that if Moicano's ever on top of him, that'll probably be the beginning of the end. And like I said, I don't know what round Moicano gets the takedown. But whenever he gets on top of him in like a solid position, I think he's going to win by submission with like an arm triangle or a choke or something like that. So I'm going with Moicano to win by sub. Next is Cub Swanson versus Daniel Pineda, and to me, this is the closest fight on the whole card. I still have, am having a hard time picking who's going to win. Overall, I think these guys have basically almost the same style. They're both primarily strikers with good grappling. They both have solid takedown offense and solid takedown defense and good overall jiu-jitsu. I would say Pineda's probably a slightly better with his jiu-jitsu overall. He's got more offense from his back than Cub does, but I would say Cub's probably a little bit better with his takedown defense and getting back to his feet. Once again, they're both primarily boxers, so I think that that could be where most of this fight takes place is on the feet, just in a boxing match. The biggest thing is Cub has definitely slowed down a little bit, but I don't think he's slowed down a ridiculous amount. And Panita has looked really good in his last, like, you know, six or seven fights. It's really, really hard because, like I said, I feel like these guys are almost mere images of each other there's like slight differences but for the most part i say they match up almost identically i'm going with cub but like i said i would not be surprised at all if pineda wins this 
is borderline, like, you know what I mean? This should be an even money fight. I think it's really a coin flip. I think it could go either way, but I'm leaning towards Cub, just because I think his boxing is a little bit better. That's just my own personal opinion, but yeah, that's how I'm going. On the main card, the first fight is Junior Dos Santos versus Surreal Gain, and to me, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like Junior just never fights to the best of his abilities. I think there are tons of fights where if he mixed up the way he fought, it would help him. I think this is another fight where Surreal looks like he has pretty good wrestling, but we haven't seen him off his back. And I think if Junior really tried to take him down, he could probably get it. But he never really does that, and I don't know why he doesn't. He's got a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu that he like never uses, and the two or three times I've seen him actually use his wrestling, he dominates people. He just like never chooses to use it. And it it's really annoying, because I think if this is just a straight kickboxing match, I'm leaning towards Surreal, and I think that's what it's going to be. Because I think that Junior is primarily just a boxer, and I think Surreal is much more of a kickboxer. And I think that their overall striking is pretty even when it comes to the boxing, but the kicks are what's going to edge out Surreal in all the rounds. I think that he's just going to add up points with all the kicks he's going to land. They're going to land about the same amount of punches, in my opinion, but the kicks are going to be the huge difference. And I don't think Junior is going to use his wrestling and his jiu-jitsu, which, like I said, I know people don't give it a lot of credit, but I've seen the few times he has taken people to the ground and then he dominates them. And I'm not saying he could necessarily do that to the game, but I think he has a better chance of at least winning this fight if he did try that. But my other thing is Junior's been knocked out three times in a row now, and I just think his chin's not as good as it used to be, and I think Cyril is probably going to catch him and knock him out. I mean, Junior's striking level is still really high. We saw when he fought um, uh, uh, or Rosenstrike. You know, he was winning that fight until he got knocked out. Like, I mean, it was pretty obvious that he was winning that whole fight up until that point. But I just don't think his chin is there. And I think in terms of the overall striking in this fight, Cyril Gaunt's a little bit better. And I wouldn't be surprised if Cyril knocks him out. Like I said, I wish Junior would use his grappling because I think they could actually help him in this fight. But I don't think he will because of that I'm leaning towards Gaunt. Next is Kevin Holland versus Shakre Sosa, and I get why people are really high on Kevin Holland. He's really fun to watch, but let's be real. His takedown defense is not amazing. He has really fun jiu-jitsu, but that is not going to matter against Shakare. I think Shakare will tie up with Kevin and take him down in the first like minute of this fight. Like I said, Kevin Holland has like okay takedown defense, but he gets taken down a lot. Like In, the, in most of the fights where guys try to take him down, they usually get it. And I feel like Shakare is a good enough grappler where if he's trying to take Kevin Holland down, he'll probably get it. And the thing is, if Shakare is on top of you, like, Kevin Holland's not a black belt either. He's like a purple belt or a brown belt. Shakare is just going to cut through his guard and, like, submit him. And I think other than Kevin Holland catching him with a huge shot in the first, like, minute, minute and a half, realistically, I don't think he's going to do that. I think the most realistic thing is Shakare times to take down the first minute, minute and a half. Once he gets it there, it's going to take him another minute or two to lock up like an arm triangle or a rear naked choke, and then he's going to win by first round sub. So I'm going with Shakare to win by first round submission. Next is Mackenzie Dern versus uh, Vivian. I can't say her last name. To me, this fight entirely depends on if Mackenzie can get to the ground. If she gets on the ground, I think she has a big advantage. I think they're both primarily jujitsu chicks, but Vivian, you know, is definitely the much better striker. Mackenzie Dern's striking has gotten a lot better, but I would still lean towards Vivian in this case. My biggest thing is they're just both jujitsu chicks, and I do think that if Dern's really trying to get to the ground in this fight, she probably will. And if it's on the ground, I'm leaning towards Dern. I just think she's the better grappler overall. I don't know if she'll submit Vivian, but I do think she's going to win at least two of the three rounds and win a 29-28 decision. Next is Tony Ferguson versus Charles Oliveira, and... To me, unless Tony's, like, completely done, he wins this fight, like, nine times out of ten, in my opinion. I think that these guys have almost the same exact style. I just think Tony Ferguson's a little bit better at everything. I think his overall striking game is better. I think his overall jiu-jitsu game is a little bit better. And his overall wrestling game is definitely better. Like, Charles Oliveira's the better finisher, probably. But I think that in terms of his overall skill, I would lean towards Tony in the jiu-jitsu department. Like, Oliveira, like, if he locks on something tight, he'll get it on at anybody. But to me, the biggest thing is I think Tony Ferguson's got a big advantage in the wrestling, and I don't think Charles is going to be able to get this to the ground. And I think this is just a straight-up kickboxing striking match. You know, Oliveira's got some speed, and he throws long strikes, but I think Tony just hits way harder, and he doesn't wind up as much for his shots as where Oliveira likes to throw, like, these big kicks. 
And, um, you know, Oliveira's definitely gotten much better with his striking. He's definitely a really good striker now, but I don't think it's the same level of Tony. I think that Tony's boxing is just way better than Charles's. And like I said, I think he hits way harder, and I think eventually he's going to win by knockout in, like, the second or third round. So I'm leaning towards Tony to get a late TKO. Finally, on the main event, Devinson Figueredo versus Brandon Moreno, and this is kind of like the last fight. I think that in terms of striking and jiu-jitsu, I just think Figueredo's a little bit better at both. I also think his overall physique and his physical strength is just higher than Moreno's. Um, I just, like I said... I think in terms of the overall striking, especially Figueroa just has a significant advantage with his overall striking ability. On the ground, I know Moreno has a chance. You know, he, he's like a national champion in Mexico in jiu-jitsu. And if he could get Figueroa to the ground, he has a shot. But I just think Figueroa is too strong with his takedown defense. And his jiu-jitsu is good in his own right, you know. Um, I think the biggest thing is the kickboxing. I think that... It's going to be on the feet most of the fight, and I just think Figueredo does way more damage when he hits people. His technique and his overall power are just way better than most of the guys of this weight class. And I think other than him having a bad weight cut, which it didn't seem like that was the case, I think he this is going to be a lot like when Figueredo fought Pantoja, and it's going to be a competitive fight on the feet, but he's just going to... We're going to see it. We're going to see when they exchange the power difference, and, you know, Moreno is going to be getting more cut up and more, you know, wobbly when they exchange strikes, and I think Figueroa, I don't think he finishes Marino, but I think he wins a dominant 50-45 decision. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.